Hello, my name is Eric Ergen. Today I'd like to talk to you about the single sign-on feature of Unified CCE Release 11.5. Single sign-on is supported for agents and supervisors only. There are three modes of support, SSO, non-SSO or hybrid. Hybrid is very useful if you are migrating or upgrading from an earlier release. SSO requires HTTPS and is supported by Finesse, Intelligence Center, MediaSense, Enterprise Chat and Email, Management Portal, and the Transaction API. For smaller deployments up to 2,000 agents, SSO component can be installed on the CUIC server. For larger deployments, it'll have to be on a standalone dedicated virtual machine for performance reasons. There are some caveats in this release. Only 4,000 SSO agents are supported, which has an impact on the 12,000 reference design. Only a subset of those 12,000 agents can be enabled with SSO. Active Directory Federation Service is the only supported identity provider in this release. Finesse IP phone agent and remote PG deployments are not supported in this release. Enabling SSO in an existing or a new release requires these six high-level steps. There are very detailed instructions available in the Unified CCE Features Guide. Installing Identity Service, which is the new component, can either be done with CUIC or in a dedicated virtual machine. Following that is the system inventory configuration, which is done right on the web administration. Configuring identity service, establishing trust between itself and identity provider is step three. Registering and testing components is done right from the web administration portal of Unified CCE. Also from the same location, we can choose our SSO mode and migrate agents uh, either in bulk or uh, over time. All right, time for a quick demo. Assuming you had installed the identity service and now you are ready to configure the inventory and your identity service, I'd like to point out a few things on your Active Directory controller. In our environment, since we did not have the ADFS component, we had to download it as a package and, and run it to install. And if you have you know, the same environment, uh, just be aware you need to add that as a package. Once you add it, uh, you can bring up its management, snap in here, and start adding your relying party trusts and your claim, uh, claim rules. Uh, before you go there, however, uh, one thing you need to also be aware of is the authentication type uh, that UCCE requires from ADFS is uh, form-based. However, by default, ADFS supports integrated uh, authentication uh, as its uh, first choice. So we need to go to the INET pub ADFS and LS folder and find this web.config XML file Within that file, go to the authentication types section. It's a small file, it's not very big. And, and reverse the order here. Make sure the form-based authentication option is uh, at the top. After you do that, uh, save, and you're ready uh, to configure your uh, trust establishment. So let's Go to the Unified CCE web-based administration. 
to uh, configure the system inventory. If you are migrating or upgrading, you probably have uh, the, the, the inventory completed. Although when you migrate to or you know, upgrade to 11.5, the identical service would be a new component. So you would have to come here and add the identical service. Uh, depending on how the installation was done, if it's a dedicated server, then you select the identical service primary. Uh, if it's a, a co-resident deployment, then you would select the CUIC LD, uh, which stands for Live Data and IDS. We had done that here, as you can tell. We uh, provided the CUIC credentials and the identical service administrator credentials and we also added the primary finesse server social miner and our principal aw uh, once it's done you can go to the single sign-on page uh, which is new in 11.5 and from here you can configure the ids you can register these components with it and you can test sso and the last thing would be to set your mode. So let's click on the identity service management link, which takes us to the administrator portal of identity service management. Here we need to establish trust with the identity service provider. To do that is a multi-step process. Click on settings. The first thing on the IDS Trust tab is to download our metadata. This metadata file called sp.xml will be used later on on the identity provider to configure the relying party trust. Therefore, uh, make sure it's accessible from your Active Directory controller. Uh, put it on a shared folder or a network drive and click on next and this is the second part of the authentication uh, this will be uploading as opposed to the download in the first part this is uploading of the metadata file of the active directory controller to the identity service management so if you think about it, we downloaded it so we can upload it to the identity service provider. And in this step, we assuming we had already downloaded the metadata from the active directory from the identity service provider, we are uploading it to identity service management in this step. So we can use the file browser and find uh, the metadata file that we downloaded from the identity service provider and upload it here. Uh, you might ask, you know, where do I get that metadata from my identity service pro identity provider? Um, well, one thing you can do, as I alluded to before, is to go to the Features Guide and in the Single Sign-On section on page 149, you have the URL to download the Federation metadata file. Or you can also Google it, uh, whichever is easier for you. So once you downloaded the file, uploaded it here, your next step would be to test SSO setup. So before we can test, however, uh, let's go back to Active Directory server, uh, where we set the form-based authentication to be um, um, preferred. Now we also have the sp.xml file from the identity service management. Now we are ready to add a relying party trust. So we click on that, which brings up this wizard. And in the wizard, in the data source option, we will select import data from the file. And this is where sp.xml file is used. And once you provide that file, you will be able to continue 
uh, with the wizard and, and finish uh, this part of the installation. Since we had already done that, let me go show you our relying party trust uh, that points to the CUIC server. Uh, basically, this requires the sp.xml file plus setting an identifier, uh, the display name, the relying party ID, which is case sensitive, and lastly, the secure hash algorithm. Uh, Unified CCE in this version supports SH, SHA1. So by default, when you create a relying party trust, it is set to 256. So you need to change that. Uh, click OK. And then the next and the last item is to add your claim rules. Uh, there are only two claim rules. Uh, one is custom. Uh, let's look at the first one. Basically, you need to create two attributes as shown here, identical to as shown here. So UID is your first attribute and user underscore principal as the second attribute. And make sure the claim rule name uh, looks like this as well. Don't change it. And the second one is a custom rule, as I stated earlier. It's best if you get this from the feature guide, uh, copy, paste, and then change the host name to point to your ADFS server, and that's it. So we created the relying party trust, added the two claim rules, and we are all set uh, in establishing the trust between our Active Directory and Identity Service Management. At that point, we can run test SSO setup and validate, uh, verify the configuration. Once we are done with this, uh, we go back to the Unified CCE Web Administration. And we can, as you can see, we had not run a test so far, so we click on test. So as you can see, the test can be run from this side as well as from the Identity Service Management side. Uh, either side is fine. Uh, my recommendation would be to do it in both places, uh, just to double check everything. Uh, we did a quick test and now we are uh, all green across the board. The last item would be to set your mode. And this is important. Uh, the options here are, as uh, indicated earlier, there are three options, uh, non-SSO, if you are migrating to 11.5 or upgrading to it, you don't want to change anything, you're not interested in SSO, set it to non-SSO and leave it at that. Uh, same business as usual. If you want to kind of see what SSO is like, you want to practice with it, uh, you are not completely ready, hybrid would be a good option. It doesn't take anything away from SSO capabilities. It only gives you, uh, the, you know, added capability to run SSO selectively. You can enable one agent, two agents, and see what it's like. Uh, another reason to set hybrid mode would be for uh, lack of SSO support in some applications, such as Social Miner such as uh, Remote Expert Mobile, and that could be other applications as well. The only applications that support SSO, as shown on the slide deck, are Finesse, CUIC, uh, MediaSense, uh, Management Portal, Enterprise Chat, uh, and Email, and etc. So, uh, in, in summary, two criteria to help you determine the mode would be your enterprise readiness uh, as a company if you are ready for SSO and secondly application mix depending on what applications you're running what applications the agents are using uh, day to day that will help you determine the SSO mode in, in this case we set it to hybrid as shown here and that's about it for uh, enabling SSO.
Before we finish the demo, let's take a look at an agent experience. Let's bring up Cisco Finance. Uh, in 11.5, the way we log into Finesse, uh, you know, upon launching the browser is by using our uh, domain ID. And that basically uh, determines if this agent is SSO enabled or not. If it is SSO enabled, uh, it will direct me to the Active Directory Federation service, which will provide uh, the form for me to enter uh, my credentials. Uh, once authenticated there, I will be taken back uh, to the interface you see here, Cisco Finesse, where I can enter my extension and click Submit. So we are logging into an SSO enabled agent desktop on Finesse and we have uh, multiple tabs as you might be used to uh, if you are already using Finesse. Uh, one of these is the enterprise chat and email and it's an application that supports SSO so it will use my credentials to log me in automatically as shown here. Uh, social media is using Social Miner gadget. As you might remember, Social Miner is not supported and seems to be a problem with this gadget. So we will reload this. And as you can see, I am prompted to enter my credentials. So Social Miner does not support SSO. Expert Assist is using Cisco Remote Expert Mobile Gadget on Cisco Finesse Agent Desktop. Although it seems to be uh, loading properly and it did not ask me to authenticate, if I try to send a call in, it will not work because single sign-on will prevent uh, authentication between Finesse Server and the Remote Expert Mobile Server. So these are the caveats to be aware of. And the last caveat I would uh, throw out there is uh, when I am done with my session and I'm logging out, um, and this is as part of your migration to SSO, it should be part of your, uh, the, your plan, your migration plan, is to train your agents not only in using SSO features, uh, how to log in, but also how to log out properly. Uh, logging out from Finesse does not log you out from an SSO session. To log out from an SSO session, an SSO authenticated session, you need to kill the browser completely. You need to quit and then the next agent coming to this workstation will have to bring up the browser and and, and log in to Finesse and SSO uh, that way. If you don't kill the browser session, the next agent comes in and clicks here and they are taken to the John Smith's old session. So it's just something to be aware of. Uh, with Active Directory policies, you, know, you, you can easily uh, clear the session out uh, properly, but uh, just something to be aware of. All right, thank you for watching, and please remember to subscribe to my channel on YouTube for uh, additional videos on what's new in Unified CCE 11.5.